All right, the first thing we did is we bought our one gallon, 3.7 liter pressure tank here. And the first thing I did is I bought a brand new one. So obviously there is no, gonna be no sediment in here at all. It's gonna be fresh. So I'm gonna be able to do um, a fresh bleed, put some uh, brand new brake fluid in there. So I don't have to worry about any old fluid or any pesticides. So anyway, this is a great little uh, pressurized tank here. And if you uh, want these items for yourself and do this uh, build yourself, I'm gonna have links in the description box below. So make sure you check that out after the video and I will have uh, all the updates on these products in the description box. All right, and mine actually does come with a pressure release valve. This was kind of cool. I was thinking about mounting my gauge here, but I decided to leave that put. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my gauge here, and this is just, this is kind of a, maybe a different fitting than what you want, um, but you just want something that uh, jams in. I might be mounting it right between the spout and the pressure relief right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a small hole and we want to get that nice and tight fitted right in there. For this pressure uh, um, brake bleeding, you actually just need it to go up to about 25. We're going to be uh, just using this small portion from my fingertip to 25. Of course, this is a air compressor gauge that goes all the way up to 200. But uh, I'll have a link in the description box where you can get one that uh, just has smaller numbers. You don't need uh, all this pressure here. You just need to deal with 0 to 25 and mark it where you want the uh, drill spot to be for your gauge with pin or permanent marker. First drill bit size we're going to do is 9 64ths and if you don't have drill bits set um, again look in the description box for a link and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start small drill into that work my way up so I don't uh, mess this up for some reason here and I'm going to remove this just in case I go too far in I don't want to puncture that And don't worry about the little shreds that pop up. They might fall in that little hole, not a problem. Just uh, remove them, and if they fall in after you're completely done drilling, of course, that black thing is removed, so just take it on down there. And you can even, you know, if you really want to, you can even uh, put a little rag in there, you know, and wipe it around if you really, really wanted to, if you were concerned about any flakes getting in your brake system. The idea is we're gonna work our way up to, every gauge is gonna be a little different, so check yours, but, I'm working my drill bit size up to the end of this here, but I want to make it nice and snugly tight, um, and then I'm going to heat it up as you'll see, but of course I'm going to work my way up to about a 3 8 drill bit, uh, maybe a little smaller, see if I can just kind of like mash it in. But we're going to work our way up to this, so let's um, go to our next drill bit here. Okay, just finished up with uh, the 1 4th drill bit, that was our second drill bit. Alright, next was the 5 16 and our hole is getting larger now, but our hole is still not big enough, so let's continue. We just finished up with the uh, 3 8 and unfortunately my gauge still doesn't fit. Um, of course, you're, if you're wondering why I haven't taken off this bottom portion of the fitting, is because I know it's just a straight down, uh, smaller uh, um, fitting here. The only fortunate thing though is that it would be sticking straight down or straight up like this, jammed in there, which I guess wouldn't be that big of a problem, but most gauges used on these have a fitting on the back and you would just mount it straight like this. Of course this was a hand-me-down gauge so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use it to save some cash. Alright, our fifth drill was the uh, half, uh, one half uh, drill bit. It looks like my hole is big enough now so what I'm gonna do here is it's nice and snug right now so I'm gonna go ahead and thread it on in but to uh, make that nice so I'll be able to thread it in a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and heat this up with the hair dryer here. Particular fitting here, the half drill bit next to the 3 8 there, um, which is a big one. That's working perfectly here. Let me show you. Um, there's the drill bit, the half drill bit there. And now, after I heat it up with the blow dryer here, I have then... Make sure it's threading on just like a normal nut, nice and flat and tight, and then just twist it around. And this already actually had um, some uh, threading tape on it, and I'm not going to thread it anymore. I'm not going to let it sit down right here because I don't want any air seeping through the threads. So I'm going to leave it on the thread here, 
and as the plastic is then cooling down from the hair dryer, uh, become more snug as it cools, plastic cools, it's going to become more snug around this as well. But if you feel a little extra frisky, you can actually put some JB Weld um, or some uh, airtight sealant around this. So here's a look of the uh, mounting on there. Looks pretty nice, huh? We have our uh, pressure release valve here, we have our gauge pressure system here, and we have our nozzle right here where the hose is going to go on to. And we're going to test our cap to see if it screws on, which this one does. Fantastic. And so European size for BMW is one and one half. All right, now that we have our one and a half um, inch cap here, we need to drill a hole in it. And so we're going to use the top of it here, and we're going to drill a hole right through the middle of it here. So that our one and one fourth, our one fourth inch ID times one fourth inch MIP brass hose barb um, can go ahead and fit uh, right underneath and come up through the top here. Again, we're going to drill small hole starting just so that we don't crack it or it flings around on us. We're going to drill a small hole and then work our way up to fit this perfectly. And again, this is just a plumbing cap. Um, it does not have a um, flat surface like your actual um, reservoir cap. So if you do have an extra cap lying around the garage, then definitely use that. But this is my makeshift one here. Um, I'm going to drill not in the exact center here because there is a ceiling line there. You see that right there where my thumb is? We don't want to crack that apart. So it actually already had this little dot kind of hole in it here. So we're just going to put it kind of off-center here a little bit. So I'm going to drill right there. All right, here's hole number one. All right, here's my third hole. Working my way up again. Won't fit in size, so let's stair step up a couple sizes at a time to make sure that uh, it's nice and secure. All right, and again, that fitting here is the exact same size as our um, gauge hole here. And the drill bit is the, uh, the half. Uh, the drill it, the big dog. Okay, now that we have our hole drilled here, we're going to put an O-ring on the bottom of this. And because this cap is a little bit rounded at the top, a washer won't work. So we're going to use a nice squishy O-ring, and we're going to put the O-ring on this here. Alrighty, I got here a nice little O-ring. And this is actually, um, if you uh, want to know the size here, this is a number 7 O-ring here. The dimensions are one half OD times three eighths ID times one sixteenth uh, comes ten of them. I got a discount because mine only had five. That's okay. Uh, so we take our O-ring here and we're going to put it over the back of this here. And again, you want a nice, nice fit here. And if this looks familiar, this is just pretty much exactly like you know your O-ring comes with um, um, when you do your oil change. So. Now the O-ring is beautifully on the back of that. What we're going to do here, if you have some kind of like other washer or whatever, you know, you can do that too, but I'm not going to do it. Um, now we just put it in nice and flat, and we screw it on in, wrench to, uh, to tighten this up now after it's hand-threaded in there. So this is a number 15 wrench. All right, and we're getting there. We don't want to crush the O-ring, but we want to get it on there nice and tight. And this is on there so tight that <clears throat> there's no way air is getting out of there, I'm sorry. But you want to get that O-ring nice and flattened down there, so <clears throat> let's keep tightening here. Okay, we've hit our limit here with our O-ring, and you can do one or two more snugs if you really want to. Again, it's not a flat surface, so this side's going to be nice and snug. The other side is going to be a little give to it, not much at all, though. No air is going to come out of there. This is what our bottom looks like here. And there's a little bit of threading. And with that securely uh, sealed down there now, screwed on. Again, with uh, bleeding the brakes, you only need about anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds PSI of pressure. So there's no way 10 or 15 pounds of PSI is going to send that shooting up. There's just absolutely no way. So um, if you are overly concerned, you can put a little JB Weld um, underneath here or on the top here to secure that on or if you really want to get um, nasty with it you can put a uh, um, 3 8 inch uh, times 1 4th um, on the bottom here and what that will do is that will screw in right here that will tighten in 
on this. You might be able to thread it on the end of that, but again, I'm not going to worry about it. This isn't going anywhere. That's on there really tight. And that is our cap. Now, if you want to place this right on top of your engine here, that's fine, you know. And then this will actually reach over there. And this is the stock hose that came with all-purpose sprayer. And I just didn't, of course, put on the, uh, the sprayer gun right there. And this will clip right into our cap, which I'll show you in a second. But if you would like a longer version of this, and if you would like to put this on the floor, you know, to get that out of your way, then you would buy a roll of this. This is... 3 eighths times 1 fourth tubing here and it's the same size as um, the sprayer that I bought and then what you would do is you would just cut that to the uh, you know right size that you want so you can put it again on the uh, garage floor and then you can um, you know pump all the way over to there the reservoir but what you would need though is you would need another 1 fourth end like this and this is a different size but you would need a one-fourth straight connector looking like this. And so it's going to have, it's going to be the exact same as this here, but it's going to have the little thing in, um, in the middle right there, and then it's going to be the, uh, the same on the other side as well. That's if you want to make the hose longer to put on the ground. I'm not going to. Um, the hose isn't very uh, much money, and then this connector is not much money, but if you want to save even more, just um, put it up where uh, mine is right here. And this, uh, this hose that has come with it has already uh, you know, reached capabilities. Next, we have to put our hose into uh, our fitting here. So let's go ahead and shove that on in. And it goes on nice and snug there. And if you're worried about the pressure, we have a resolution for that as well. So this uh, hose doesn't blow off and if you're worried about the hose blowing off you can always just put one of these small guys on here and this is the exact same thing that you know a larger one you would put on your radiator hoses so that the hoses stay on nice and tight and it's just a uh, flathead screwdriver um, thing here and you just put your screwdriver right here and you tighten it on up and as you can see that's nice and securely on there and that is not going anywhere so depending upon the parts that you use, uh, your gauge, you know, type of uh, cap and, and extended hose if you want the extended hose and, and whatnot, um, you're going to probably look at uh, anywhere from 15 to $20. Some of these items you might have in your garage or your dad's garage. But again, if you don't know where to find these parts and don't want to go searching through the store, then just go ahead and look at the uh, description links below. I'll have um, definitely one for the gauge and the sprayer and uh, maybe some tubing in the uh, the cap as well. Um, so take a look in the description box. Okay, and this is what the system looks like here. So if you want, you can of course you know attach the longer hose and put this on the ground. But once you have it pressured up, you know this is just sitting right on top of the uh, the engine there. We got our pump system right there, and our line goes over and sits right on top of the uh, brake fluid master clutch cylinder there. And that's how we do it, guys. And if you want to see this guy in action, we're going to be using this to bleed our brakes. And so stay tuned for that video. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do, guys. I have a lot more videos coming. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys.